So, what did I think of today? Just like the cricket, sadly, today was a bloody frustrating draw. The Prime Minister, with no great surprise, decided to hold a press conference in the middle of the day with two hours' notice for reporters. She turned up and, just like those bloody South African batsmen, she just went straight and blocked. She blocked most of the questions. Occasionally she let a few things through, but nothing was ultimately destructive. It's been interesting to see those that are the most ardent critics of the Prime Minister. They haven't been able to, within the immediate couple of hours after the press conference and the question time performance, to be able to say, aha, we finally caught you in that lie. And that now is probably the thing that Julia Gillard is going to fear the most. It's why she has kept quiet for as long as she has. She knows that while the paper trail is very warm, is very interesting, ultimately, unless there is the piece of paper from Julia to her ex-boyfriend saying, thanks for the stolen money, this thing's not going to result in her being overtly linked to what happened. Now, before you yell at me, let me try to explain. Where the Prime Minister is now is all about how she plays the next four days, just like the South Africans did in that cricket test. If she can keep pay playing a straight bat, if she can keep making reference to what happened in the press conference today, then effectively she will survive the week. Now, those who passionately dislike her, those that believe that every single piece of paper incriminates her and every new day and new revelation in this story incriminates her, well, you're not really up for grabs in this. Neither are the people who are so wedded to the Prime Minister that they believe the whole thing is nothing but a dirty, evil smear. It's the great group of people in the middle. The people who I often talk about. The people who don't often pay attention. The people who understood that on the day that the Prime Minister made, supposedly, the great misogyny speech, she was actually standing up for Peter Slipper. The people who paid attention knew the context of that speech, but the people who didn't pay attention only heard about the great speech with her giving it to Tony Abbott. The people that have been paying attention to the AWU story and scandal find every little nuance fascinating about this today, but to the great middle, all they will remember is the bit where she jumped into Ralph Blewett about his past. Now, the Prime Minister does have a million questions that were there to be answered. The Prime Minister did effectively bat away many of those questions, if not fully answer all of those questions. And it brings me to the group that I am most disappointed in today. Now, it pains me to say that unlike back in August when the Prime Minister did turn around and hold a press conference at the very last minute on a subject that nobody knew was going to be about the AWU, that was overtly trying to catch off the press gallery who had virtually no understanding of the story and then using that 51-minute press conference as some sort of cover to say, well, hang on, I've answered all my questions. But this time around, we all knew what was going to happen. We all knew because the opposition had been pumping it up that this was the week. This was the zenith. This was the week where maximum pressure was going to be applied on Julia Gillard. Yet seemingly, for the best that I can work out, many of the Prime Minister's chief critics in the media didn't hop on a plane, didn't catch a bus, didn't find the nearest car and get to Canberra for the press conference. Now, this is a key point. Because often what many of the critics of the Prime Minister have done, and they've done it very effectively in the showbiz of journalism, is that they have sent written questions to the Prime Minister and the Prime Minister's office either offer no response or one-line responses. It's very effective when you're trying to build the case that you are the truth teller and the Prime Minister is obfuscating. The problem is we all knew that there would be a press conference this week. We all didn't know that it was going to be today. We didn't know that it was going to be 50 minutes, but it is unthinkable that a Prime Minister in the final sitting week of Parliament wasn't going to pop her head up about something at some time. It was beholden on those who have been most critical of the Prime Minister and know the most about this story and the ones who have the questions that the Prime Minister finds it hardest to play the straight bat against. They should have been in that room today. I don't know why they weren't. But we have to now put that criticism of the Prime Minister to one side. It'll also be interesting to see where the next 24 hours goes. What will the front page be tomorrow? Will the focus be on the Prime Minister's defence? Will it be on the attack of Ralph Blewett? Will it be on Ralph Blewett's series of no comments that came back? What will it be? And in not just the 24-hour news cycle, but in the super speed kind of ADD world of the internet, we move on to the next story every hour, the next story, the next story, the next story. And there are already people that are saying that she needs to do another press conference. Well, it's not going to happen. And also, just as I said a couple of weeks ago, the opposition needs to produce something by the end of this four days. 
They seem to be working towards something when it comes to the Prime Minister knowingly setting up something that would be against union rules, but they have to push harder. And they can't just ask questions that the Prime Minister is going to be able to say, well, hang on, I already dealt with this. I dealt with it in the press conference. Now, I find that a very frustrating tactic. It's not the tactic that I think the Prime Minister should use for openness and true honesty, but it's not about that. Be it a Labor Prime Minister or a Liberal Prime Minister, all Prime Ministers will play the straight bat and try to just survive the day. It looks like Julia Gillard has survived today and most likely has set herself up to survive the week. But I think what truly came out of today, and this will perhaps be the egg on my face in a couple of months' time, but I think we can now start seriously talking about an early election. When the Essential poll came out today suggesting that the majority of Australians now, for the first time, support the carbon tax, as opposed to don't, and the negative ratings of the opposition leader, and presumably what will be the obstinance of the Prime Minister will be rebadged by lefties as her strength, that this will become the mantra over the next few weeks. Sure, Kevin Rudd and his supporters will do everything they can to try to make it look like Labor MPs are nervous about the Prime Minister's position. But I think that all roads now lead to the government is unable to deliver its surplus and also want to cut off Kevin Rudd's ability to make it look like Labor MPs are about to desert a Prime Minister in scandal. So don't be surprised if this might be the final week of Parliament before an election that could be called in early February for March. Otherwise, it's just two more weeks of Parliament in February, but I very much doubt whether this Parliament makes it all the way to a budget that well and truly the Prime Minister won't be able to play a straight bat on because that will be an unmitigated disaster that she can't blame on shady blokes from the past.